What's going on, everybody? Simple back at it like I'm checking my height. Today, we're checking out the restoration of the Ava Maria narrated version. If you guys enjoy this, make sure you check out the Bum Gardener restoration channel. Go show them some support over there. Let them know Simple sent you. If you guys haven't subbed up over here yet, definitely make sure you do. That way you can get notified next time we drop another video. If you guys have a request, Google Form is down in the description. Let's go. In this video, we're going to follow along the restoration of an icon of Ave Maria on wood. When this piece arrived, I was impressed with the extent of the damage and just how precarious wow. the piece was. As you can see, there are massive sections of loss. Lots yeah, of the paint are. has completely detached from the wood structure. The paint is flaking all over. I would be completely just nervous about even opening that thing, right? Like, how intimidating do you think that is when, when this guy gets this thing and he sets it down for the first time, opens it up, he's probably just like, oh, please be something I can fix. How often do you, do they run into stuff? How often do you guys run into stuff that you can't fix? I mean, I'm sure you try your very best for every single piece, but... I'd be interested to see like what is the what is the most beat up piece that you guys have ever restored and wh what was the before and after i love this type of stuff and it's incredibly dirty so before i can even begin to think about any restoration procedures i have to address the fact that all of this paint is literally detached from the wood support so carefully i'll remove the pieces of paint that have completely detached and i'll place them on an acid-free piece of foam cord I'll try to keep them aligned so that I know where they'll be returned to during the restoration process. So it's like taking I'll a puzzle apart. I'll use digital photography to document the location of these pieces so that they aren't lost or misplaced during the next steps. In this case, the main reason for the separation of the paint from the panel was not only due to the movement of the wood, but poor preparation of the panel itself as the paint layer separated at the gesso. So I'll remove all of the old gesso, all of the old rabbit skin glue, and any other materials I find on the panel to reveal the raw wood so that I can stabilize it and prepare a new layer for the paint. Wow, okay. In addition to being quite damaged, this wood had suffered pest infestation and rot over time and wasn't really providing a stable support for the painting. Now, there would be an argument to be made to remove the painting completely from the wood and transfer epoxy? it to a new superstructure. But in this case, the client wanted to keep as much original as possible, and I agreed with him. So I'm injecting a B72 resin into all of the voids of the wood. Okay. And I'm going to seal them with this B72 to not only solidify the wood, to fill the gaps, and to stabilize it. Yeah. This B72 resin is stable. Oh, it's reversible. Oh, that must be so and dangerous. It'll... Like every time you flip it over to work on another side, right? There's always that chance that, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All that paint could just fall right out. Like you could, there could be other pieces that are just ready and willing to fall right out. Mm. Fill the gaps so that all of the open areas will be solid. Look at how true. Why is. The back of the structure shows just how damaged the wood is. Is that termite due to damage? Rot and pest infestation. Yeah, okay. So again, I'm going to inject the resin into all the gaps to fill those gaps and stabilize the wood. And I'm going to brush the resin on so that it penetrates into all of those voids. And I'll repeat this process until the wood is completely saturated and can accept no more resin. Hmm. Okay. With the resin dry, we can start to see how all of those voids have been filled. And this not only creates a smooth surface onto which I can prime and prepare the wood panel, but it also ensures that the wood isn't going to move anymore because this resin will act as an adhesive and hold those two pieces of wood together. So I'll go ahead and using the scalpel and the sensitive touch of bare fingers, remove any excess resin that's on the surface of the wood. And here I'm using an acrylic gesso that I'll modify so that it has better penetrating properties. Because when I apply this first layer of gesso to the wood, I want it to penetrate deep into the wood pores to ensure that there's a good bond for the successive layers so that any fill in and retouching that I do after it, the painting is fully cleaned won't suffer the same fate of detaching as the original uh, paint did. So just working slowly and okay. very carefully, I'm gonna make sure that the entire area of exposed wood is covered 
I'll let it dry and I'll repeat. I'll let it dry and I'll repeat over and over again. Definitely makes it a lot easier to see your workspace too. Now before I can start cleaning the painting, I have to stabilize and secure all of these pieces of paint that have somewhat detached from the wood, but not completely. So here I'm using a heat activated and solvent activated solvent, and I'm injecting it into and under and around all of the areas where there is lifting. Oh, In this case, I have to penetrate that's so the paint cool. layer to access the void underneath and inject the adhesive. Again, penetrating the paint layer, injecting the adhesive until there's maximum saturation. Later, I'll come back and I'll activate the adhesive and bond this paint layer back down to the wood. So That is so cool. I didn't even know you could do that. You can inject something that you can later come back and then just heat treat it and hard, hard as a rock. That's so cool. You can see that our lifting and flaking. I love how much care and time that let it cool He's, he and takes dry, with this and like it takes a special type of person time with heat and pressure and stabilize all of these areas so that they won't be at risk of flaking now with all of the loose paint layers stabilized i can lay down a layer of adhesive and to begin to put the puzzle back together taking all of those pieces of completely detached paint and placing them back onto the wood structure that has been primed, I can ensure that there's going to be a good bond. Now, luckily, the pieces are... I honestly thought in my head, right? I wasn't even going to say it, but I'm going to point it out now. I was going to say, why would you start with the one floaty piece out in the middle of nowhere? But then he put the second piece in there. This guy's a puzzle master, that's why. Fairly large, and the image is a good guide, but I will refer That's so cool how they just kind of, like, float into earlier, place, too. If I find myself uh, a little lost... Uh, as to where a piece will go. So much time Even and the care. pieces need to be placed back where they belong and secured to fit. Once this adhesive dries, there's not much room for maneuvering the pieces of paint layer, so I want to make sure that I have a good solid fit from the get-go. Yeah. Wow. Now with the adhesive fully dry, I can begin bonding all of those pieces of paint back down to the wood. So here I'm using a heating iron a piece of silicone release film and a piece of felt to apply even distributed and mild heat to the surface of the painting. The silicone release film makes sure that nothing sticks. The felt allows me to apply pressure without damaging the surface of the painting. And you can do it right on the silicone release film because it's silicone, all the right? Paint stabilized, I can begin the cleaning. Of course, process. you had that uh, extra pad, After but I saw quite a few tests to understand oh, what was on the surface and settling on it being a accumulation of linseed oil. Uh, I decided on using a gelled solvent to remove oh, the built. What? Hold up! How? How did you do that? What is? The, I thought you were painting it. Stabilized, I can begin the cleaning process. After making quite a few tests to understand what was on the surface and settling... And what do your tests consist of? Because I'm completely interested. How do you test the painting to see what it's on? Or what, yeah, what it's on. What's on it? And what is this magic you're using to erase time? On it being a accumulation of linseed oil, uh, I decided on using a gelled solvent to remove the built-up grime. Now, linseed oil is not easy to remove, but the gelled solvent does allow me to uh, soften it and then remove it. Now, I know a lot of commenters are going to say that I should never start in the face, but in fact, I made dozens of tests all throughout the painting before I began working on this. And for the purposes of making an interesting video, uh, working on the face and the main figure is a little bit more entertaining than working on the background. Nonetheless, I will work to clean off all of the linseed oil from the background. I mean, obviously, you know what you're doing. <clears throat> I will definitely give you that. So all the people that tell you don't do it this way, don't, bro, don't even listen to them. This is this is awesome. This um, is amazing. And from the gilded area. I didn't even know you could do this to a painting. Now, oh. Some areas can't be removed with solvent, and so I'll turn to a scalpel to delicately scrape off that built-up grime. Oh, the coconuts and on that man. Fully cleaned, I can begin wow. to start building up a new base layer of gesso and putty so that we have a smooth surface onto which I can do the retouching. There's nothing complicated about this. It's just a matter of building up layer after layer until we have a nice, uh, proud surface that I can then remove with a scalpel and swabs. 
And again, people are going to say, why aren't you using gloves? And it's because I can't feel the surface through uh, latex or nitrile gloves. But with my bare fingers, I can feel it. And I want to make sure that I have the perfect surface for the retouching. Now, before any retouching can begin, I first must remove any excess fill-in material from the surface of the painting in preparation for an isolation layer of varnish to be applied. Now, this isolation layer is going to be B72 resin, and it's going to be brushed on, and it's going to serve two purposes. One, it's going to isolate the original work from any additional work that I do, the retouching and the regilding, and two, it's going to saturate the colors and simulate what they'll look like when they're finally varnished, wow. because I want to make sure that my wow. retouching matches what the painting will look like in its final state. Now, at one point, this icon was heavily embellished with gold leaf, but over time, much of that original leaf was lost. Luckily, there is some still left to provide a guide and so I'm going to be regilding it using traditional gilding techniques. You saw me applying a size, and here I'm cutting the leaf into small manageable sections, and I'll apply it to the size, tamp it down with the brush, and then using other brushes, I will ensure that it's got a good bond and remove the excess. I'll work the leaf with various tools, and I'll tone it with a tinted shellac to make sure that it matches the original. Now with the painting fully stabilized, filled in, and ready to begin the retouching. Now in this case, I'm using a different retouching method than you've seen me use before. For this piece, I'm going to be using an Italian technique called trateggio. You have to pardon me if my pronunciation isn't perfect, but it means uh, to sketch or to hash out in Italian. And the particular technique I'm using is called... So is that like when, when people nowadays, they like draw the picture? and then they just paint over everything. Is that, but he's doing it with the paint? No, which means uh, stripes. So effectively, I'm sketching with vertical stripes. And the goal of this technique is to conceal or camouflage the damage to the eye, but not completely imitate So you then go it away. So the goal is at a few feet back, you can start to wow. see the damage come together. But as you get closer, you can see the restoration work uh, that I've done. and. That's an appropriate method for working on old masterpieces or yeah, icons where we want to preserve some semblance of artifact, but still allow the piece to look uh, complete and full. Wow. And the last step with the retouching all complete is to apply a new ultraviolet stable, fully reversible varnish. In this case, what does I'm that using Regalra's varnish. What, what did you say? And the last step with the retouching all complete is to apply a new ultraviolet stable, fully reversible varnish. Okay, that, that's a lot of words. Ultraviolet stable, fully reversible varnish? I'm going to have to look that up. In this I don't case, know what that I'm means. using Regalra's varnish with a Tinuin 292 stabilizer. And this is a fully reversible, ultraviolet stable conservator's varnish. Oh, what was up with the little water drop? You can see there's little droplets that are forming on the top. Why? Is uh, fully reversible. See it? You can see it after that brush stroke. You can see little droplets that have formed. Ultraviolet. Because they move. Conservators varnish. Is that I'm just where it hasn't settled? Because I don't want to spray it and cover the entire piece. Mm. So as you can see, the piece is fully conserved. The damage has been addressed. That's while incredible. Still preserving uh, some of the artifact qualities of the piece, and I'm very satisfied with how it turned out, and I'm excited for my client to see it too. So I hope you enjoyed watching the process of restoring this icon of Ave Maria. It was a fun project for me. It allowed me to show you guys some different techniques, different approaches, uh, different materials. Oh, I love how you did that videos. side by side. And I'm really excited. You should have switched uh, it though. This piece turned out. I think it looks really great. Uh, while still hold up though, I didn't even notice. This piece turned out. I think it. Oh, there is like a. It's like a field in the back with a waterfall, right? I didn't even actually see that until the finished piece. Like I can see it now. I was wondering why there was a random flower up by our face. It makes a lot more sense now looks really great uh, while still acknowledging some of the history of the piece uh, and preserving it in a sensitive way. 
So uh, if you would like, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Or was it not a waterfall? It just it was broken pieces. Listen, ahead, it was definitely not what he made it, and he made it beautiful. So definitely make sure you guys go check out the Baumgartner uh, restoration site. Go pull some other stuff. Let's check it out. You did an absolutely amazing job, man. Congratulations. That was that was beautiful. That was almost as beautiful as watching someone paint something. I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought about down in the comments below. Let me know where to go from here. If you enjoyed this one, thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Make sure you guys stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive. I'll catch you on the next one.